Hi everybody, this is project number two for the Multisensor Electronic Learning Board. If you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, the link is below. Um, as well, if you want to learn more about the schematics, the uh, product videos that talk about each block and schematic are also linked below. Now this video is going to be broken down into two parts because we're going to make two circuits here. We're going to make uh, two light sensors or laser trip wires, but they're going to have different functions, and that's why we're going to break it down into two videos. So the first circuit uh, is going to be uh, very similar to our microphone circuit, and the second circuit is going to be a little bit different. We're going to use variable resistors, and the reason why I'm breaking it down into two videos is the fact that I need uh, a little bit more space here to talk about the uh, uh, the resistor divider. Um, between our 10 cam resistor and our light dependent resistor. This is essentially a variable resistor on its own that changes its resistance based on how much light or how much darkness is hitting the sensor. In darkness, the resistance goes way up, uh, past um, 100,000 ohms. And when it's uh, a lot of light is hitting the sensor, we get between 1 and 5,000 ohms. Anyhow, we're going to talk about a circuit that you're, you should already be familiar with if you've been watching the uh, project videos. Uh, we've got our, our coupling capacitor that blocks the DC component right here. Uh, right here on the div 1 line, we would see a variable voltage between 0 and 5 volts depending on how much light was hitting the uh, LDR, the light dependent resistor. But again, we're going to talk about that in the next video. What we're going to do is we're going to expose the sensor to light and we're going to cover it in darkness really fast. And what that's going to do is it's going to couple a very, very, very tiny signal across the coupling capacitor here. It'll block the DC and it'll only couple that tiny, tiny, tiny signal when the light across the light dependent resistor changes. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to go on and connect our AC pin, our AC couple pin, to the A1 plus pin. So that's our first amp of two onboard amplifiers. Now I've gone through the schematic and the explanation of how a non-inverting operational amplifier works. Check out the product videos below if you want to know more. Once we've connected that, those two lines together on the main pin block, we can adjust the gain one 100k variable resistor to change our sensitivity from really 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 low to mid-level to really, really high. And we're going to we're gonna tune this resistor so that we get uh, a very, very high uh, sensitivity. So it'll amplify that tiny signal right here to uh, a 5-volt a spike whenever you cover the LDR. And once we have that calibrated, we're going to actually use our LED pin to calibrate this. We're going to connect the A1 out amplifier 1 output pin on the main pin block to the LED to calibrate. But once we're done that, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the A1 out pin to the input of our 555 timer in monostable mode. So we'll connect the A1 out to the in pin and that will act to trigger the 555 timer uh, operation when uh, basically when the signal here is amplified to a 5 volt spike it'll, it will activate the 555 timer in monostable mode and what that will do uh, if you haven't watched the project videos you should know what the 555 timer does in monostable mode, it'll turn one little spiker into a long pulse. Now you can adjust the pulse using the DLY variable resistor on the main board. And we can make uh, the pulse really, really short, really, really long, and we can take the DLY output and we can connect it to our Arduino. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, um, I've written some code, it'll be in the, um, it'll be in the manual. We're also going to use not only our hand to cover the sensor, we're going to make a little laser tripwire. Now this is one of two laser tripwire light sensor circuits we're going to make. Again, we're going to talk about the div 1 output connected to a comparator, and we're going to make, uh, connect that to our buzzer unit. But we're not going to use that for this specific video. We're going to use our AC coupled output, select our light dependent resistor, amplify the signal, and tune it. Use our LED as a visual indicator, and we're going to use our 555 timer in monostable mode, and we'll tune that as well.
the first thing you're going to want to do is take your two pin jumper and connect the two LDR pins on the sensor selection pin block. Next, plug it in. The next thing you're going to want to do is connect the AC pin on the main pin block to the A1 plus pin on the main pin block. They are side by side. And so now we have our AC coupled signal line from the light dependent resistor connected to the amplifier. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the A1 out pin on the main pin block to the LED pin. What I've done is I've taken a flathead screwdriver and I've tuned the gain one resistor by turning it clockwise, clockwise 10 to 15 times. So simply get a flathead screwdriver and take the little screw head and turn it clockwise about 15 times. And what you should see is watch the LED right here when I cover up the, uh, the LDR. Now what that's doing is if I cover it up quickly and I hold my hand there, you see it light up, but then it goes out again. That's because it's reacting to that single change in light. Now the other circuit that we'll go through in the next video will have an on-off effect. So if you cover it up or break the laser beam that we're going to use in the video, uh, the LED will stay on or off. And then when you remove your hand, it will reverse logic. Again, that might sound a bit confusing. We need to go over the circuit before we get there. But what we've done right now is we've made it so that if we there's a quick change in light over the LDR, the, L, the uh, LED lights up. That's exactly what we want. So now we're going to take the uh, A1 output that's connected to the LED currently, disconnect from the LED, and we're going to connect it to the in pin of the 555 timer. So I've connected the A1 plus pin to the in pin on the 555 timer, and I've taken the DLY pin on the main pin block, and I've connected to the LED. And uh, for, th for those of you who have not watched the first project video, this potentiometer labeled D or DLY, DLY uh, allows for you to change the pulse width. So now if I, if I make a change in light over the LDR, there's a constant pulse width. Now I can turn the DLY variable resistor clockwise to make that pulse longer. I can turn it counterclockwise to make that delay much shorter. So now we can take the DLY output from our board and connect it to an Arduino. Or we can connect it, what we, say we want to use our active buzzer or our active relay attachment. What we need to do then is those are triggered by active low signals. So because the signal coming from the DLY output is normally low, we'd want to make sure that that was normally high. So how would we do that? We'd need a comparator. So in order to, to drive our relay or buzzer board, uh, we're going to need to connect the board to the 5 volt supply and ground. There's three pins on both of these boards. One is VCC, which will connect to 5 volts. One is ground, will connect to the common ground line on the, main, on the power supply pin block. And then we've got our input, our signal line. So ground, input, VCC. We'll get to that in a minute. <clears throat> when we have a 0 volt signal, a low signal on here, the relay or the buzzer they're activated. So the output here at the output of the 555 is normally low. So we only want to activate these things when we activate the 555 timer. But if we connected a normally low signal to a normal to an active low buzzer or relay, it would always be on and it would turn off whenever we activate the 555 timer. So we want to invert the logic on this so that the output is normally high and when triggered it goes low to zero volts. And how are we going to do that? Well, if you watched the uh, proto videos, we'll talk, we talked about how to do that with a comparator, a voltage comparator. Now what we've got here is our onboard variable resistor that we can tune to any voltage between ground, 0 volts, and 5 volts. And I'm going to show you how to tune this to 2.5 volts in just a minute. We're going to connect that pin, the VAR pin on the main pin block, to the C1 plus pin, the positive input of the first comparator on the comparator pin block. So there's always going to be 2.5 volts on the positive input. Now if you remember our comparator discussion, if there's more if there's more voltage on the positive input than the negative input, then the output will be high by naturally. But if there's more voltage on the negative than the positive, then the output will go low. In any case, we'll connect the DOY output on the main pin block after we've calibrated it to the C1 minus, the comparator 1 negative input on, a, on the comparator pin block. 
So what's going to happen is we're always going to have a high output until this is triggered. So we've got this calibrated between halfway between 0 and 5 volts to the 2.5 volt mark. If you get anywhere close to it, it's really fine. It doesn't have to be 2.5 volts, but we want to make sure that there's always a constant voltage on the positive input, so the output is normally high. And when the output of the 555 timer is triggered, the voltage goes from 0 to 5 volts, which exceeds 2.5 volts, so we'll see 5 volts in this line. When there's more voltage on the negative than the positive input, the output goes from high to low. And we'll connect this pin to our buzzer or relay input pin. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to show you on the board right now. Again, before we move forward, I just want to do it one more time. The output of the 555 is normally low, LED off, and goes high when there's a change in light on the LDR for a short period of time that we tune. So we want to invert that logic. So first things first, I'm going to remove the DLY output from the LED, and we're going to tune the variable resistor. What I've done is I've taken my black lead, my negative lead from my multimeter, set my multimeter to voltage, and I've placed the uh, negative probe on the top of the 7805 5-volt regulator. The top of that is connected to the main ground line. Alternately, on the power supply pin block, the bottom four pins are also connected to common ground. Now the VAR pin, it might be difficult for you to see, is the second pin up from the lower left. It's labeled VAR on the board. So if I touch my positive lead there, right now it's connected, it's uh, it's at roughly 2.7 volts. So if I want to adjust that, I'm going to need to tune the VAR resistor right here. So let's do that. Using your preferred hand, connect the, pro the what, red probe to the VAR pin. Steady. And use a flathead variable or flathead screwdriver if I can get it in there turning right brings the voltage up turning left or counterclockwise it will bring the voltage down so fine tune it 2.5 volts there we go so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to connect the VAR pin using a female female connection connector to the C1 plus pin on the comparator pin block. Now keep in mind you don't have to take it this far. I'm just talking about customization here. Now we can take the DLY output on the main pin block. Sorry if my hand gets in the way here. And connect it to the C1 minus input on the comparator pin block. Now our CP1A output, the comparator 1 output on the main pin block, there's actually two pins uh, that can be connected to, we'll use CP1A, that output, we'll connect that to the LED and we'll, we'll activate our 555 timer and see if we've inverted the logic successfully or not. Success. So let's touch, let's put our hand over the LDR quickly. Output goes low. So we've inverted the logic. Now again, we can tune the duration of how long that that uh, the output uh, is brought low by tuning the DLY variable resistor. You'll be able to tinker around with all this at your end. Lots of customization here depending on how you want to use your circuit. So, our buzzer attachment. We'll connect VCC to the 5 volt line on the power supply pin block, ground to the ground one of the ground pins on the power supply pin block, and what, what we'll do is we'll connect the CP1, uh, CP1A pin from the LED to the buzzer. So the buzzer input. So now, what if we wanted to take this just a little bit further and use the laser attachment? What I've done here is I have taken my laser attachment, connected the red wire to the 5 volt line on the main, on the power supply pin block, the black wire to the uh, ground on the power supply pin block, and have aimed the laser beam at the LDR. So now I've got a laser tripwire circuit. What if I break it? Let's break it again. 
So lots of customization here. You can take those outputs, you can plug them into the, uh, into the uh, Arduino if you want to, but you can do a lot of customization on the board by just doing a couple calibrations here and there and adding, subtracting external hardware. Now I might mention, this is an extremely laser trip, uh, extremely sensitive laser tripwire circuit. So lots of fun. You can plug in, plug the, the circuit output from the CP1A to your Arduino, and you could program it to uh, using some of the code that I'm that uh, I've talked about in previous product videos to go beep 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 whenever you trigger the laser. But right now, this is purely hardware. There's no software here. In any case, we're going to talk about another laser tripwire circuit uh, and possibly bring in the Arduino on the part two video of project number two. But that'll be another day. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this made sense.